You were having that. sex with a girl that's 10 years younger than you in her grandmother's house? I was not the only man there going in there. It was three other people. There, no, no, Come there on, was now. not three other people. Come on, now, you want to put it out people. there, we can put it out there, There was there, not. not. The time Anyways, that I can see, hold on, you wait. were in my house. Violence is never the answer. But hey, who doesn't like a good fight? And it might not be the UFC, but paternity court has had its fair share of nasty bouts. So we start off with Ms. Mitchell sharing her heart-wrenching story about losing her mother to breast cancer. She's here today to find out if Mr. Jordan is her biological father. Ms. Mitchell, you say you met the defendant, Mr. Jordan, in a courthouse when you were seven years old. Yes. And he was taken to court for child support. Yes. You claim he denied paternity testing at that time and claimed you as his daughter and began paying child support. Yes. And surprise, surprise, Mr. Jordan is sure that he's not the father. He recalls meeting Ms. Mitchell when she was just a little girl in a courthouse. He stepped up to the plate, paid child support, and even considered adopting her. But he's always had his doubts, and he's here today to set the record straight. And say, hey, that's okay, we don't need a uh, paternity test. And I told her, I say, I'm your daddy, baby, right here. And I took on that responsibility, okay? And I paid her mama $400 a and month. And she was seven years old. She was seven or eight. Her mom wanted me to adopt her, so I I changed my living conditions, bought bedroom furniture, got a... The courtroom is buzzing with emotions as Ms. Mitchell expresses her disappointment in Mr. Jordan for not being there for her. She recounts instances where she felt neglected and unacknowledged by the man she believed to be her father. Did you have doubt in your mind, though, during that time? I've always had doubts, ma'am, but it was nothing I could do about it. He never tried to be a father. I had accepted the fact that I had... A uh, one night affair, bit bam, thank you, man, with her mom one time. And after that, I never thank saw her again. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate for seven that. Thank to eight you years, for okay? having that image in my head. As the story unfolds, we learn about a failed attempt at bonding over car repairs that ended in a freeway fiasco. Yes, you heard that right. Ms. Mitchell's brakes came off on the highway after Mr. Jordan's coaching session. Talk about a wild ride. I, I was scared. I didn't know what to do. So I had to sit up there and figure out how to get off the freeway without crashing into the wall. So I grabbed the, uh... You still here? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jordan! Yeah, what? That's dangerous! You know that! Hey. The courtroom is divided as Ms. Mitchell and Mr. Jordan share their contrasting perspectives on their relationship. While she longed for a father figure, he claims she only reached out when she needed something. The tension between them is reaching its peak, and we can't look away. I was seven years old. I remember him. I remember sitting on a bench, and the judge asked me, do you know who your father is? I said, no. That's when he came up and said what he said about, well, I'll be her father. And that's when I was like, okay, well, you're my dad. So I'm thinking, he about to start coming over. I'm about to be with him so we can start spending time with each other. As the judge delves deeper into their past, we uncover the complexities of their relationship. From a courtroom encounter at seven years old to failed attempts at bonding, the story takes unexpected twists and turns. You told me to call him Jordan. Is that true? Mr. Jordan? I tell everyone to call me Jordan. No, except her. Mm. That's <laughs> your daughter. Your daughter. So I raised this one like that. So that's his daughter. <laughs> so why is it that she can't call you daddy too? I'm not, hey, I'm not Because I'm not your daughter? I, I don't know. I don't. You know, what I feel is if the reason why you're he didn't so... show up my wedding you, or anything. You create such a distance between her is that you just have that doubt. The tension in the courtroom is palpable as the judge prepares to reveal the results of the paternity test. Ms. Mitchell and Mr. Jordan hold their breath, waiting for the moment of truth. Will their lives be forever changed by the outcome? Mr. Jordan, you are her father. What do you feel, Ms. Mitchell? I guess I just want him to treat me better as a yes, daughter. <laughs> Ms. Cotton claims that Mr. Pendleton's meddling mother is stirring up trouble by denying her five-month-old daughter, Love Cotton. She's confident he's the father and is ready to set the record straight. On the other hand, Mr. Pendleton and his mom are adamant that he can't father children. Ms. Cotton, you say Mr. Pendleton's meddling mother is the reason he is denying your five-month-old daughter, Love Cotton. You claim you are 100% positive he's the father and plan to set the record straight today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Cotton is fired up, telling Mr. Pendleton to stand up and take responsibility like a grown man. She's convinced that little love is his spitting image, but Mr. Pendleton is not buying it. He's throwing shade, saying the baby doesn't look anything like him. Like, my daughter looks exactly like him, and I really cannot figure out how he denies her. Your Honor, she don't look nothing like me. She don't got none of my features, my, you know, my nose, my mouth, my eyes, nothing. And on spite of that, I've been in a relationship for eight years prior to this, and I tried for six years to have a baby and couldn't. 
So... But he thinks my daughter looks like his father, so what are you talking about? Hold on to your seats, folks, because Mr. Pendleton's mom enters the ring. She's not here to play nice, warning her son not to get attached to the baby until he knows the truth. Shots fired. Ms. Cotton fires back, saying her daughter doesn't need them if they're going to deny her. It's a family feud on paternity court. Your Honor, one... We'll start with the meddling that she says I'm doing. The only thing I've done is tell him, do not get attached to this child until you find out whether or not she's yours. I told him I didn't want him to bring the baby around me for the same reason. But I didn't want my baby around you anyway. She has a whole family that loves her. The courtroom is buzzing as Mr. Pendleton drops a bombshell claiming that Ms. Cotton told him the baby might not be his. Uh-oh. Ms. Cotton defends herself, saying she only slept with one other person, and it was protected until the condom came off. The court records say that your child was born in December, right? Yes. Right. All right, so December and you count back. Eight, landed eight, April at nine months. I carry her 30 eight weeks and four days. And so that means that you believe the timeline is off from when you slept with the other guy? Mm-hmm, yes. But you did have sex with someone else, and was it protected or unprotected? It was protected until he took the condom off. Mr. Pendleton is not convinced, questioning how Ms. Cotton can be 100% sure if there was a slip-up with protection. He's playing detective, trying to piece together the timeline, but Ms. Cotton stands her ground, saying the baby is his because she looks like him. And I actually took the pregnancy test at home, I told him. Then when I went back to the hospital and they gave me, like, you know, the eight weeks, I told him that as well. And the way, like, it was confusing how they did with my ultrasound and they had my due date all mixed up because I've been confused the whole time. So like, I, told I don't know what's going on. As the courtroom drama unfolds, Mr. Pendleton's mom reveals that she's been through thick and thin with Ms. Cotton, even helping her during tough times. But Ms. Cotton is not having it, saying her daughter has a whole other family that loves her unconditionally. The claws are out. So, Ms. Cotton, were you doing the back and forth because he was making you angry? I told him one time, yes that it probably wasn't his because he was making me mad. Like I said, he had a whole nother sure. girl and you were really playing games my whole entire pregnancy. Games. Like, I'm not playing games. But you don't, you, you do still know. acting like if love come back that she's yours, we gonna be together. What, what Man, about last night? I'm gonna be there with her. The tension reaches a boiling point as Mr. Pendleton and Ms. Cotton go head to head over the paternity of little love. Ms. Cotton is standing firm, saying she's been taking care of her child regardless of the doubts thrown her way. Will the truth finally come out? Mr. Pendleton. You are the father. <laughs> Yo, he is so fake. <laughs> Mr. Pendleton, it really does look like you have tears in your eyes. This meant something to you, right? It did. Miss Spruel here is absolutely fuming because Mr. Dixon is denying that he's the father of her daughter, Skaya. She's not having it, folks. She's here to set the record straight. Miss Spruel, you are furious that you had to file a paternity case against the defendant, Mr. Dixon, due to his denial of your daughter, Skaya. You say you know the exact night you conceived and he is her father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Dix, you need that her child is not yours. Is yes, that correct? Sir. Mr. Dixon, on the other hand, is standing firm in his belief that he is not the father. He claims their relationship was purely physical and that one conversation is all the proof he needs to deny paternity. Uh-oh, this is shaping up to be quite the showdown. Hey, too, Your Honor, I want to say this too. Um, I have doubts that this is my child. Why? Because Kamai is constantly lies. Oh, wow. She even lies about this baby. It was a time when she was pregnant. She said, I slipped and fell in the tube. Your you text me, you took text me, to the me saying, you text me saying you're in the ER the whole entire time, but once I'm on the phone, His you're in the living room, took me to the hospital. giggling, laughing, playing His with sister. your son. Ms. Spruell is not holding back. She's calling out Mr. Dixon for flip-flopping on whether he's the father or not. One day he's in, the next day he's out. She's had enough of the back and forth, and honestly, who can blame her? Alabama, when his daughter was one, one month old, to say he was working. He wasn't working. He was not working. You, you want to know how? You want to know to get a better job. Oh, no, no. To make more money. Our but daughter. But constantly lies. It's coming from her. One at a time. Our daughter, it wasn't even seven months. Mr. Dixon had a whole nother chat. And here comes Mr. Dixon with his doubts about being the father. He's got a whole diagram ready to explain why he's not convinced. Apparently, a co-worker dropped a bombshell claiming that the baby is actually his brother's. Then my daughter just disappeared. First of all, No Your Honor, pictures, no them nothing. Them pictures were not on there when I moved to Alabama. Them pictures I, up there before Your Honor, I, I have Alabama. evidence. You say he accepted the baby at first, and this is your evidence to prove it. So this is 
is his page. And, and that is my baby girl. That is Skya. And he had other pictures of Skya so, on there as well. And you claim he's accepting her. He's made her He was telling her he was so happy. But hold up. Miss Spruill is not having any of Mr. Dixon's doubts. She's firing back with receipts, showing that those supposed family members were just spreading lies. She's not here to play games, folks. She's here to prove that Mr. Dixon is the father. He tells me we gonna be all right. We gonna take care of this baby. Everything gonna be fine. Two weeks later, you, we let his mother know that I was pregnant. She pretends to be happy-go-lucky about it, but Thanksgiving, all hell breaks loose. I wanna know what happened on Thanksgiving. Oh, everybody found out that I was pregnant. He, everybody knew I was pregnant by then. Cause at first, they were saying I was lying about being pregnant cause Mr. Dixon kept telling them I wasn't. And just when you thought things couldn't get any crazier, Mr. Dixon drops a bombshell of his own. He accuses Ms. Spruell of having two phones, one for social media and one for calls and texts. What's the deal with that? Kamaya has two phones. She had one phone that she used to be on the internet and she posts her whole entire life on Facebook. She has Turn another up. phone where she texts and calls. She no, plays like she two people him. on Facebook. He has that she number. Done did He's not allowed to time. have my main number. We have no communication because, like I said, he's, he's not, not allowed to have your no. main number and he's no. the father oh, no, of no. your child. We're going to go to why he can't have my main number. Oh, and let's not forget the whole Alabama situation. Mr. Dixon apparently hightailed it to Alabama, claiming he was working, but Ms. G. Spruell ain't buying it. She's calling him out for having another child while they were still together. Yikes! Talk about a messy situation. He's daddy of the year. Me and him fall out. Skya doesn't exist. And that's what infuriates me more than anything. I don't care how you feel about me. That baby didn't deserve well, that. Well, why? Why do you My lie? baby did not deserve that. I don't care how you feel about me. That is a child. I know what it feel like to grow up without your daddy. But wait, there's more. Ms. Spruell reveals that once Mr. Dixon was in Alabama, he was parading their daughter all over his Facebook, cover photo and all, the same child he's been denying. The plot thickens, folks. This is getting intense. A life of Facebook is like a diary to her. If that baby was in the hospital, she would post 20 or 50 doggone pictures and guess what? on That's Facebook. What you want to know but she didn't else? post not one Your picture. Honor. Okay, she wait. Not post not so you, why do you believe she would lie and say her child was suffering from a medical challenge? I don't know. Maybe she's trying to get my Your attention. Honor. Okay. How can you watch your child grow up through Facebook for an entire year? And just when you think things couldn't get any crazier, Ms. Spruell drops the bombshell that Mr. Dixon was making babies down in Alabama. Making babies, people. The drama just keeps on coming in this courtroom. The question is, did he make this baby too? The DNA test results are in and we're about to find out. Mr. Dixon, you are the father. Thank you. You feel relieved, Miss Spool? <laughs> I do. How do you feel, Mr. Dixon? I'm excited. I have a beautiful, little ba beautiful baby girl. I'm gonna be the best father I can, and I'm just glad the truth is out. Ms. Davis is a young mom in desperate need of some help raising her one-month-old son, Josiah. She's pointing the finger at Mr. Means, claiming he's the father and needs to step up. But hold on, Mr. Means is not having any of it. He's denying paternity faster than you can say deadbeat. Ms. Davis, you say you and your grandmother are in desperate need of assistance in raising your one-month-old son, Josiah, and you need the defendant, Mr. Means, to accept his responsibility. You both believe the only only reason Mr. Means is denying your child is because of his fiance. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Davis is only 19, while Mr. Means is a whole decade older. Now that's quite the age gap. But age ain't nothing but a number, right? Well, in this case, it seems to be causing quite the drama. Ms. Davis is not about to let Mr. Means off the hook that easily. Ms. Davis, were you also having sex with his friends? That is not true. And it wasn't just a three time, hit it and quit it. He was actually staying at my house. He was eating there, sleeping there. He, he yes. was living with you? Basically. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And, and your grandmother? Yes. yes. <laughs> Mr. Means is coming in hot with the defense that he was never in a relationship with Ms. Davis. He's claiming she was out there mingling with multiple partners during the window of conception. Oh boy, this is starting to sound like a soap opera. Who's the real daddy here? So you all are having the sexual relationship. You say it was more than three times. Yes, Your Honor. How long did this relationship last? About three months. Three months? Yes, Your Honor. And he would stay in the house with you and your grandmother? Yes, Your Honor. I was, I was not the only man that had gone in there. It was three other people. There, no, no, Come there on, was now. not three other people. Come on, now, you want to put it out people. there, we can put it out there, There was there, not. Now, she's want to get real, go see, get real. No, the time Anyways. that I can see... Ms. Davis is laying it all out there, saying she shouldn't have to raise Josiah on her own. Grandma's even in on the action, backing up her granddaughter. It's a family affair on paternity court today, and things are heating up real quick. I felt it was safer for her being there than in the street. 
And so you want you you said it was okay for her to have sex there, then to be out in the street having it? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, well, I have proof of, con- of conception. Can I would I like to, to see that. That's the exhibit. Is that what yes. you'd like to show me? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Hold up. Mr. Means just dropped a bombshell. He's admitting to having relations with Ms. Davis not once, not twice, but three times. Unprotected, no less. And during the window of conception, you betcha. That's a no, that's a no, that's a no, that's a no. <laughs> Okay. Come on now, baby girl. You talking about two men? You got three, four other people you need no, to bring that up in. No, that is not true. That is not true. Like that. So Nobody hold on. You put an X on every month. And you put an X on June. I is the X for June. not having sex yep. or the sex for extra sex? <laughs> <laughs> But wait, there's more. Mr. Means is claiming he wasn't the only one getting cozy with Ms. Davis. He's throwing shade at her, saying she was playing the field. Ms. Davis is not having it, though. She's standing her ground and calling out Mr. Means for his alleged shenanigans. Your testimony is, Mr. Means, that during all of these months, she was also having sex with her ex. Yes, she Do you have proof of that? I definitely have proof. He moved, he, he moved up to Georgia with them. Is back and forth, back and forth. You got every, pictures, no, messages no, no, of it? Every time y'all that... got into it, you called me and told me. Come on, now. Huh? Grandma's in the mix now, folks. She's spilling the tea on how Mr. Means was practically living with them, sleeping over, eating their food, the whole shebang. Things are getting awkward real fast. Who knew paternity court could get this messy? Did you send these texts? Yep, and there's a reason why I send it, too. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, I'll be on with you. I ain't, I'll be on with you. What's the reason? What's the reason why? Because at first, as I did at first, had a possibility of thinking of mine, but after people telling me and what I was seeing, how she is, I knew that wasn't my child. Hold up, did Mr. Means just admit to having relations with a girl 10 years younger in her grandmother's house? Red flags are flying everywhere. The audience is eating this up and we're just getting started. Strap in, folks, because this roller coaster is about to hit its peak. But were you also sleeping with Miss Davis during the window of time where she conceived? It was kind of on and off, Your Honor. It wasn't, it was maybe once a week, something like that. So there is a possibility. Your Honor, I was intimate with him, but it was not, again, it was not around the time of my conception. Miss Davis is not backing down. She's got proof of conception, and she's laying it all out for the judge to see. Dates, times, you name it. She's got it all mapped out. But Mr. Means isn't going down without a fight. He's got his own version of events, and it's a he said, she said showdown. I never told you I was seeing two other guys. Are you serious? Your Honor, that's what she told me. I'm not gonna argue with this woman. Whatever. Okay. I ain't mad at you, brother. The bottom line Whatever. is... <laughs> No comment. I'd like to know if you feel he is this child's biological father. No, I do not, Your Honor. You do not? No. Why? For the simple fact that she had multiple partners. The tension in the courtroom is palpable, folks. Accusations flying left and right, drama unfolding at every turn. But it's time to end all the fighting with the most powerful weapon in this courtroom, the DNA test results. Mr. Pittman, you are not the father. Mr. Means, you are the father. I can tell by your reaction that was not the news you wanted to hear. It is what it is. I just want to see my son. Good. Have you ever seen him? Never seen him. Never held him. Never been around him. Don't even really know his name. Don't even know nothing about him. That's Never sad. Asked. And he's yours. And he needs his dad. <sighs> Mr. Morris is absolutely convinced that he's the father of the woman standing across from him. He's all in, heart and soul, ready to put an end to years of confusion. On the other side, we've got Mrs. Brister, who's not so sure about Mr. Morris being her dad. And let's not forget about Ms. Smith, the mom in the middle of it all, hoping for some closure. We might need a flow chart to keep track of all this madness. Mr. Morris, you say you are 100% certain that you are the biological father of the 29-year-old woman standing across the aisle and want this court to put an end to years of confusion, lies, and doubt. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Brister, you say you don't believe Mr. Morris is your father and that you've been lied to by your mother, Miss Smith, regarding who is your biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Morris takes us back to the 80s when he was a break dancer with moves smoother than butter. He met Ms. Smith and knew right away that she was the one. Cue the romantic music. But hold up, there were suitors lining up for Ms. Smith like it was a buffet. Mr. Morris had to fight off the competition like a knight in shining armor. But well, actually it didn't happen until the following evening because I had to get my cousin out of the way because I was by me being shy. Three was company then? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Understood. Ma'am. So, all right, so you all started a relationship? Yes, ma'am. We How did. long did the relationship last? Mm, about, about three and a half years. 
three and a half years. Yes. Bye. Was it a committed relationship? Well, ma'am. Fast forward a bit, and Mr. Morris and Ms. Smith are in a committed relationship. Or so he thought. Turns out there were more suitors lurking in the shadows. Drama alert. But hey, love conquers all, right? These two lovebirds found their way back to each other after 14 years apart. It's a love story for the ages. After how many years? 14 years, to be precise. 14 years? Yes. And now you're back together? Yes. But there's still this paternity issue hanging in the balance. Yes. Why? You say you were only with her, she said she was only with you? I came back to town after hearing it from three different individuals that uh, she was pregnant with my child at the time and we stayed in two different towns. But wait, there's a paternity bombshell waiting to explode. Mr. Morris hears through the grapevine that Ms. Brister might be his daughter. He rushes to Ms. Smith's town, ready to set things straight, only to be hit with the bombshell of all bombshells. Ms. Smith tells him to his face that none of her children are his. Ouch, talk about a gut punch. So I left. So how old was Ms. Brister at this time? I, I would say she had to be five, maybe five or six. So, Ms. Smith, you remember telling him that Ms. Brister was not his child? Yes. Why did you tell him that if today you're saying you believe she is? He was trying to get back with me, and I didn't want to get back with him. Ms. Smith, on the other hand, remembers things a bit differently. She wanted to keep Mr. Morris at arm's length, so she dropped the bombshell that Ms. Brister wasn't his child. But now, they're back together after all these years. Can they put the past behind them and move forward as a family? This is just a timeline of some of the things that she's told me over the years. Um, I've always known the man on my birth certificate to be my father. When I was about 16, Mr. Morris, he came to visit and um, he introduced himself as my dad. I don't remember the entire conversation that we had, but I do remember him saying that he was my dad. Meanwhile, Ms. Brister has been living with the confusion of not knowing who her real father is. She recalls a DNA test as a child that hinted at Mr. Morris not being her dad. But then she remembers Mr. Morris visited when she was 16 and introduced himself as her father. The last point on your board, your exhibit. Yes, like I was saying, um, it went back to normal for me that the man who's on my birth certificate was my father. And a couple of months ago, um, my mom, she told me that um, Mr. Woods, a guy who's deceased, that he could possibly be my father. Ms. Brister lays out a timeline of the things her mom has told her over the years. From believing the man on her birth certificate was her father to Mr. Morris showing up and claiming to be her dad. Tempers are flaring, and it's a full-on battle of words. I would be assumed by eternal revenue for child support. I had the papers looked at by a law clerk and um... So the bottom line is while you were away, yeah. you were served, yeah. or you, you, you received the paperwork, indicating that you owe child support. Yes. Now With all these revelations and conflicting stories, it's clear that this family is in for a wild ride. Will the DNA test finally put an end to the mystery, or will it only add more fuel to the fire? The paternity results are in, and the truth is about to be revealed. Mr. Morris. Yes, Sean. You are not her father. Uh, what? I'm very sorry. Can I hug my daughter? Absolutely, is that okay? Sorry. You can stand with your daughter, ma'am. Miss Brister, are you okay? I am. 